Hello and welcome. Thank you for participating in this patent quick pick on the components of a phonics lesson. My name is Marianne Dudek and I'm here with my colleague Donna Halpin. We are contributing educational consultants who work on patents literacy and multi-tiered system of support initiatives. Today we will be reviewing the effective components of an evidence-based phonics lesson with you and asking you to reflect on the way you teach phonics to your students. Before we begin, I would like you to understand the mission of Patton. Our mission at the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network is to support the efforts and initiatives of the Bureau of Special Education and to build the capacity of local educational agencies to serve students who receive special education services. Our goal for each child is to ensure individualized education program teams begin with a general education setting with the use of supplementary aids and services before considering a more restrictive environment. As a participant in this quick pick, you will see that our learning intentions on the components of a phonics lesson are the following. We hope by the end you will be able to define phonics instruction, reflect on grade level phonics instruction, be able to review the importance of explicit and systematic phonics instruction, and in addition, be able to identify the components of a systematic phonics lesson plan. As you can see on this slide, phonics is an integral component of reading instruction and is the sound symbol mapping system that is necessary for recognizing words in an English alphabetic writing system. While there are many misunderstandings regarding the definition of phonics, these three uses of the term phonics are most accurate. The evidence of phonics instruction is extensive, with the most influential analysis completed by the National Reading Panel in the late 1990s. Phonics instruction was shown to improve decoding, spelling, and comprehension of text. In the year 2000, the National Reading Panel published their meta-analysis that had reviewed and evaluated the research on the effectiveness of various approaches for teaching students to read. Their findings still hold true today and support current research that shows that explicit and systematic phonics instruction helps students to become more successful readers than those students who do not receive phonics instruction or for those students whose instruction is not systematic. Phonics instruction teaches children the relationship between the letters or graphemes of written language and the individual sounds or the phonemes of spoken language. Within the IES practice guide, as seen on this slide, there is a recommendation for phonics instruction which states that explicit instruction is needed for decoding words, analyzing the word parts, writing, and recognizing words. This slide indicates what research has shown to be true for students to be effective decoders and readers. These elements are, students need to be able to rapidly and accurately identify letters of the alphabet and understand the alphabetic principle, and to know that sounds of letters or phonemes are represented by letters or graphemes. In addition, students also need to be proficient in phonics elements, such as letter sound correspondences and word parts, and finally they need to be able to apply these phonics elements while reading and writing. Reading researchers recommend that we teach these elements explicitly and systematically, providing plenty of practice to achieve mastery, and then continue to use curriculum-based assessment measures to inform instruction and to monitor progress. So, you may be wondering, what skills do we need to teach and when? There are foundational skills that are necessary for becoming a fluent reader. Each of these skills should be introduced explicitly in the grade levels as indicated on this slide. For example, in first grade, as seen in red, consonant, vowel, consonant, or CVC words should be taught. Emphasis should be on initial, final, and medial sounds, consonant blends, consonant digraphs, and long vowel patterns, including rules for silent E. The skills become more complex at each grade level, as noted on the slide. On the following slides, we will discuss these more in depth. Let's take a look at what skills students should be taught in kindergarten. At the kindergarten level, students should be learning how to apply grade level phonics and word analysis skills to help decoding skills develop. A first critical skill would be to demonstrate one-to-one -one letter sound correspondences by producing the primary sounds for the most frequent sounds for individual consonants. A second skill would be for students to link long and short vowel sounds with their common spellings for the five major vowels. 
In addition, students would be expected to read several common high-frequency sight words and then finally be able to discriminate the different sound that appears in similar words, such as pat and pot. In first grade, students are expected to learn and master spelling and sound correspondences for consonant digraphs, decode one and two syllable words, and understand that every syllable must have a vowel sound. In addition, students should learn vowel patterns, including long vowel silent E and vowel teams. A focus should also include inflectional endings and irregularly spelled words. By the time a student is in second grade, phonics work should reinforce and build upon the short and long vowel patterns, which do include vowel teams. In addition, focus should be on the students gaining a deeper understanding of word decoding with two-syllable words, which may include long vowel sounds, prefixes, and suffixes. Work with spelling patterns and building site vocabulary, including irregularly spelled words, is also critical at this grade level. Systematic and early instruction in phonics leads to successful reading, which includes efficient accuracy of word recognition, decoding, spelling, and oral and silent comprehension. According to Dr. Louisa Motes, author of the Letters Modules, phonics instruction should begin as soon as students know their alphabet letters, can segment phonemes in spoken words that contain at least three phonemes, and can associate a few consonants and vowels with, sp with their spellings. Phonics instruction should continue until students know all major phoneme graphing correspondences and syllable patterns and can make good attempts at decoding unfamiliar words. On this slide, you will see three true or false statements to help assess your knowledge. Please stop the video for about 30 seconds and determine whether or not these statements are true or false. Let's take a look at the first statement. The first statement is true. Phonics instruction does help the reader to map sounds onto spellings. This ability enables readers to decode words. The second statement is false. Decoding words aids in the development and improvement in word recognition. The more words one instantly and accurately recognizes, the easier the reading task. The final statement is true. Phonics instruction aids in the development of word recognition by providing readers with a useful way to figure out unfamiliar words when reading. Phonics is not a complete program. It is one of the big five ideas of reading and is an essential component of reading instruction. Teaching students to decode and recognize words and word parts was one of the effective strategies identified by the National Reading Panel. Just remember, as the slide states, phonics emphasis or code emphasis programs of instruction do not exclude the other components of reading. However, teaching phonics is most effective with average to below average students who do not learn how to read naturally or easily. The following chart will illustrate which skills should be taught in the grades K through 6. In looking at this chart of the essential components of reading instruction by grade level, you will see basic phonics skills are emphasized in the early grades, particularly in kindergarten and grade one. All components of reading instruction should be taught in an interrelated manner. Note that advanced phonics and word study are important components of reading well into the middle years. Recent research findings from David A. Kilpatrick states that advanced skills of phonemic awareness should continue until mastery. These would include phoneme manipulation, deletion, and substitution. Research tells us that phonics instruction should be explicit and systematic. During reading, explicit phonics instruction should be planned and intentional. When direct instruction is delivered on a specific phonics element, such as the sound of S, students are told that the letter S makes the S sound versus asking a student to find a picture with something that begins with the sound of S. Phonics instruction is systematic in that phonics elements are presented in a sequential order, increasing in complexity. Students first learn to identify beginning sounds, followed by ending sounds, and then medial sounds. Let's take a look at this four-square diagram defining explicit phonics. This four-square diagram shows the definition of explicit phonics instruction, which states the concepts are clearly defined and stated. In addition, it provides an explicit example, such as, look carefully at the word and sound it out, and a specific non-example, such as look at the first letter and guess. 
Please take about 30 seconds to review the characteristics of explicit phonics instruction and adjust your thinking if there are any discrepancies. Please stop the video now. Let's take a look at this four-square defining systematic phonics. Systematic instruction in phonics is defined as the teaching of phonics using step-by-step -step procedures or routines. Those routines may be the I do, we do, you do format. The examples on this systematic phonics four-square, follow my finger, say it when I point to it, blend it, what's the word? And you will also see non-examples, which are just teaching the concepts as they come up or teaching without any established routines. Please take about 30 seconds to review this and adjust your thinking to see if you have any discrepancies. Let's take a few minutes and look at a sequence for beginning phonics instruction. There's no single universally accepted scope and sequence for teaching phonics instruction. Programs will vary, but generally there is a progression of what to teach from easy to more difficult, as will be represented on the following slide. There's no set rule that governs how fast or how slow to introduce the letter-sound relationships. However, using consistent formative assessment would be useful in determining the rate. It is generally agreed, however, that the earliest relationships introduced should be those that enable students to begin reading words as soon as possible. So let's take a look at a generic sequence for introducing phonics instruction. As seen on this slide, the phonics concepts chosen have high utility. For example, the letters B, S, D, M, and A are high utility and will easily spell several words. Examples are bat, sat, rat, am, as, and at. Low utility spellings would be in the letter X as in box and GH as in through. In addition, it is also a good idea to begin instruction in sound letter relationships by choosing consonants such as F, M, N, R, and S, whose sounds can be produced in isolation with the least distortion possible. Instruction should also separate the introduction of sounds for letters that are auditorily confusing, such as the sound of b and v, or i and e. Separate visually confusing letters, such as b and d, or p and g. The first vowel sound should be introduced gradually. And the last point is the sound letter relationships chosen for early introduction should permit students to work with words as soon as possible. Stop sounds at the beginning or middle of words such as t, d, and k are harder for students to blend than our continuous sounds such as m, s, and l. In addition to teaching letter sound relationships, phonics patterns such as the floss rule, vowel teams, and vowel R combinations will aid in word recognition and spelling. You will see examples of these on the chart. The order of introduction should be logical and consistent with the rate at which students can learn. Many teachers use a combination of instructional methods rather than just one. Research suggests that explicit teacher-directed instruction is more effective in teaching the alphabetic principle than is less explicit and less direct instruction. Please take a few minutes to review the sequence for beginning phonics instruction. This is Donna Halpin. We are now going to be reviewing an example of the components of a phonics lesson for the short I sound and the suggested time spans to teach each element. In seeing the components, you will see that it is frequent distributed practice of a skill that is necessary for students to learn, not a one-time lengthy lesson. An evidence-based phonics program will include the following steps. First, a goal statement and a quick review of previous skills. Second, explicit instruction of the new skill. Third step is practice for new words by reading and writing. Fourth, exploring vocabulary meanings. And fifth, practice of the new concepts. Take a look at these eight steps in a phonics lesson and the instructional routines that are suggested for each step. Each instructional technique outlined on the right column can be used to support the corresponding step on the left side. On step two, the review of reading irregularly spelled words, 
Students who have learned limited phonics elements need to learn basic high-frequency words as sight words as a temporary strategy. When students are older, the sounds in these words should be explicitly pointed out and the student should then sound them out. These steps will be reviewed over the next several slides. The goal of this lesson is to learn to read and spell words with the short I sound. A quick review of mastered skills should then occur. In this situation, it is via a phony manipulation task with manipulation of the short vowel sounds. Students will then learn the sound of the short I in several words and indicate in some way that they can do this successfully. In step 3b, the teacher will demonstrate how to articulate the sound of short I, e, and ask the students to repeat the sound. Finally, the teacher will present the graphene that goes with the letter sound or phoneme. The teacher can then use whiteboards for formative assessment to guide instruction and get feedback during this activity. Step four entails having students practice blending and reading real words, pointing to short vowel sounds to highlight those critical features. It is our hope that your current reading program provide exercises similar to those on the slides, and in addition provide practice for word chaining. Word chaining is an effective way for students to practice new words by changing one sound at a time to produce a new word. Several practice opportunities would be provided using explicit language patterns as shown on the slide. The fifth step is dictation. Students should write a few sentences identifying how many words are in the sentence by clapping out the words and then writing the words. Step six is a vocabulary review of short I sound that will appear in the text. As seen in the text, the word pig is defined with additional activities provided for language enhancement. Step seven entails reading the short I words in context. The example has the short I sound highlighted in the title and the first sentence and would serve as the I do. A gradual release of responsibility to the student will occur as the student continues to read. This final part of the lesson is critical as we want our students to be able to see the sounds and the words that they've been working on in context. Students can read chorally as a group, read to a partner or partners, or read silently to him or herself. The goal is for the students to become fluent with the short I sound. This slide shows the components of a phonics lesson and the suggested time spans to teach each element. As mentioned earlier, frequently teachers are unaware of the short amount of time suggested for these steps. Please remember that it is frequent distributed practice of a skill that is necessary for students to learn, not a one-time lengthy lesson. This blank template of a phonics lesson may be something for you to consider using in your classroom teaching core instruction or during tiered intervention times. This document is available for you to download. In this sample from the 95% group, a lesson on long vowel silent E is provided. The teacher's materials contain illustrations with symbols and step-by-step -step directions. Explicit wording for modeling procedures during the I do, we do, you do phases and a correction procedure for any errors that may occur during the lesson. Please take a minute to review these I do, we do, you do modeling sections, noticing the explicitness of the routines. When you are teaching, do your routines include an I do, we do, and you do? Let's take a minute and think about the importance of using a phonics lesson plan. Do you as a teacher have a core reading program that you use daily for core instruction? How explicit are those phonics lessons? If you are working in a tiered system of support, 
Do you use explicit phonics routines to instruct the students who have specific phonics deficits? If your school or district does not have a current core reading program, or the core reading program or intervention materials are weak in phonics instruction, explicit phonics lesson would be important to deliver. Utilizing specific phonics routines and lesson plans are also critical for older readers who are continuing to struggle with decoding and fluency and may need specific phonics interventions to remediate these skills. Please take a minute to reflect on the steps and quickly evaluate your own phonics instruction. What may be missing in your routines? Can you think of how you may need to supplement or change what you do? The following slide provides a few things for you to consider when you are engaged in the planning process. Consider how the phonics concept is introduced or explained. Are the example words well chosen? Is the I do, we do, you do modeling sequence followed in your lesson? Is there attention to word meaning in the phonics lesson? Is there sufficient guided practice over a week or more? And is dictation part of your lesson format? Finally, is there application to decodable text reading in your lessons. Let's review our learning intentions one more time and hope you're comfortable with the outcome. Can you define phonics instruction? Have you thought about the expectation for grade level phonics and how it aligns to yours? Are you able to explain the components of explicit and systematic phonics instruction? And can you identify the components of a systematic phonics lesson plan? On this slide, you will see that we have provided you with the resources that we have referenced throughout this quick pick. Please take some time after this quick pick to review the Patent webpage at www.patent.net. This slide shows the Reading Initiative's homepage. Here you will find additional evidence-based resources and materials to assist you in your work. Thank you for watching this. Please don't hesitate to let us know how your new phonics routines are going. Our email information is provided for you on this slide. Please feel free to email us with any questions or if you'd like to share your explicit phonics lessons. Thank you.